Is it well, they have, a, they have a script. Do you, you guys have your script? Oh, yeah. Hold, let, me get my, let me get my script. Let me get my script. Uh, hold on. Um, I don't have any paper sure. to fumble with. Uh, give me a moment. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. I got my script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interior. Day. Uh, large hairy man. Ah, oh, three lines ahead. Oh, okay. Come on, guys. That was that was last week's screenplay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm before. Okay. So, so anyways, it, um, so I woke up this morning. Okay. And uh, I was like, hmm, something seems a little weird. And I was like, hey, what's all this extra weight going on in my legs? How right. Is it here? Right. I was like, oh shit, my penis is definitely bigger. And I was like, huh, that's weird. I haven't done anything different in my daily life except for started watching the podcast on the Twitch TV slash uh, Ugly Fish on the score one. Ugly and score fish of one. <laughs> is that all it took? That's it? That's all it took. Wow. That's... You, you, you heard it here first. That's pretty simple. I should be listening to the podcast. Let's introduce our guests. Uh, first we have, on my right... We have Keon Gurley, Troy Serena. Hi, <laughs> uh, Keon Gurley here. Uh, Troy, introduce yourself. Good, uh, glad to be on the podcast once again. I, I love, I love coming here. It's great out here in Seattle, and I, uh, <laughs> I just love the people and the environment in the town. You really can't get closer like this anywhere else. All right, and uh, to my other uh, right is Keon do I, Gurley. Do you want me to do it? Keon Gurley? Keon Gurley. Uh, would you like how, to? How was your trip? How was your trip to Thailand? Oh, the trip to Thailand was great. There was some water. <sighs> okay. Thailand. That's in. Uh, that's in Texas, right? Well, yeah. it's not traditionally, but if you're Mormon, then. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> the Mormons got me. <laughs> First topic: guns or dogs? Right? <laughs> so, guns are dogs. So, Kellen hasn't heard the context of this, but essentially, no, it's, I have not. Okay, so Troy's family, right? Would you like to describe kind of the context? Okay, of it? so I am uh, I am part of a, what they would call a military family, right? Uh, as my father is in what they would call the military. Uh, <laughs> now who's and, they? You know, them. They. them. Oh, them. Okay, okay. Them. So we have uh, access and uh, practiced firearm usage pretty frequently. Um. Now, when we looked up some firearms that I had been um, training with the other day, something caught our eye. And I'm, I'm not sure if we have any access to what we saw, but... Uh, <laughs> the first thing that Christian said when looking at the things that... The, the guns on the website, he's like, These can be just used for descriptions for dogs. And I'm like, <laughs> you're not wrong. Fun for the whole family. It's uh... just... Yeah, the the taglines was things such as fun, um, act or fast, fast, <laughs> manageable. I'm like, what? Why are you trying to? Yeah, the other point that was brought up is why are you trying to sell a gun? People know what they are. Yeah, it's shooty it, shooty. It, it shoots fast, point. dude. Nobody, nobody is buying the gun that was on that website yeah. without knowing what a gun was. Right. You know, and it's not like this really adds like some massive amount of like information right, no it's one, just like no it shoots hard no one's really looking at a gun and like hmm see this one says that it's fun but this one says that it's reliable and this one says that it needs to be walked only once a day oh i'm stumped well sometimes you, know? you have to feed them twice a day and that's really when you start running into problems right so I, we just found it weird that the, the, the gun time? naming nomenclature it's just, like, you could honestly be selling anything. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's just weird. I, uh, I guess I've never thought about the, the ins and outs of selling firearms, and if that's how it is, then... Maybe they have to sell them like it's, like, it really is family, like, like you're adding a part of the family, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, now this is not on the docket, but uh, I think it was such a big thing for us recently that we have to bring it up. Yesterday, uh, two of our very own broadcasters watched Django Unchained for the first time. Oh, yes. Great film. Yeah, hit me, Amazing movie. Hit me different. 
I was not ready for that. Mostly just Quentin Tarantino's a cinematic genius. I feel I feel like like fifty percent of the script was the N word, but also fucking great movie. Right. So let's see. I wanna I wanna I wanna bring something meaningful out here. Okay. Oh, but I don't know how, so I'm gonna just pull things out of my butt, as one does. Oh. Well, as someone who went so to film school think... for a semester and dropped out, that's exactly what we do. Wait, can, I, can I make can I make a, a spicy reference to the uh, the topic at hand? Yes. Uh. Fuck. How's the quote go? Uh, it's like you had my interest, now you have my attention. Is that right? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah there we go. Now. Dropped another set of frames here. In, now. Uh, it did not come out a long time ago. It only came out, what, like nine years ago or something like that? 2011? 2012. Yeah. 2012. It's a long time ago, guys. Now, it hasn't been that long, but how do you think that movie would either benefit or be horribly uh, taken away from in this uh, climate today? Okay, knowing Quentin Tarantino, he wouldn't care. The movie would right. still be released today. Right, I don't... I, But from those who are consuming it, AKA what we would call the consumers. What do you think? Knowing that it's Quentin Tarantino, like if he's still, assuming he still has the reputation in this alternate timeline where the movie gets released today and not eight years ago, I feel like Thanks, man. it would still go, like it, it would still pass, you know? Oh, I just punched my mic. Yep, we could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like it's so, Quentin Tarantino, so it's like- Right. And it, like, it wasn't made in a way that painted the word in a good light. And I think that was something I was, I was thinking about as, as like I kept, thinking throughout the night as, you know, the image of a man being eaten by a dog, you know, sat in my head. Right. Uh, I think one of the things that hit me was, like, at the beginning of the movie, it's painted as a casual word. But I think by the end, it, it gets to the point where it starts to disgust you. What, the Django? No. <laughs> Kellen, you, Kellen, my boy. Just... But no, it's definitely something that I don't think... I don't remember the release of it, uh, to be completely fair, so I can't really I say do. on the I, Oh yeah? I do, but I was in middle school, and the only thing I right. remembered about it was uh, me and my friends being like, well, it's a Tarantino movie, so that means everyone's gonna bleed a lot. I mean, that wasn't wrong. I, yeah. But, you know, that's what it was. Yeah. But it definitely had, like, again... We talked about this last night, but his way of, like, blending tones in a movie is so, like, unique to Tarantino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, uh, it's just, ah, oh, gosh, he's, he's so witty in the way that he can blend together comedy and, like, these horrific moments in the movie, and yet they don't feel out of place. It doesn't feel like, haha, funny, oh, and now he's dead. It's like, haha, funny, and oh, now he's dead. Yeah. I really think it has to do with, in part, soundtrack choicing. Oh yeah. Oh, of the, course. The, if you were to just go through the soundtrack for the movie, it's all over the place. Yeah, it really and is. The songs would just show up in the movie for like thirty seconds and then just hard cut into like a complete bit. Like, it, yeah. And he, he sets that up from the start of the movie. You know, he, that's not something like it's just like it's not jarring. It's something you have to point out and be like, oh, that's happening. But then once you notice it, it's just like it's there forever. Yeah. I mean, the beginning of the movie, for God's sake, starts with a, a song about the titular character, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty on the nose from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that, that, I don't know, I feel like today people would find even more of a reason to be angry with it, you know? Yeah. I think people are going to be angry at anything nowadays, and... I'm glad the movie released when it did so that we can enjoy it now. Um, but if it was released nowadays, I feel like it would get buried under so much hate that you would lose a lot of the meaning that comes from the movie. Right. It really is just a fantastic film. It's a good movie. It's kind of funny how it's like... So do you guys know, like they mentioned it in the movie, um, the, the German folklore about Siegfried. Right. Siegfried and Brumhilda. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it's like the most classic of all classic knight's tales and that's where like the whole like oh save the princess the dragon yada yada that's like where all that comes from right and, and the movie's like very much just a one-to-one -one. yeah it's like you know like like how uh western like spaghetti westerns and samurai films both follow that same kind of like yeah uh, they're allegorical 
right so they, like it, it follows that but then they don't even try to like huh. like there's little like they literally have a conversation about them being that character archetype just right like, and it doesn't feel out of place right what I think is really funny just noticing this gif of Leonardo right here I mean you said he has saber from a dragon and he's breathing smoke out of his nose <laughs> that out there. that's funny small detail but it's there it's a fantastic gift, though. It really is. Fantastic gift for a fantastic shot. Yeah. Now, um, what are you guys' thoughts about um, Quentin Tarantino actually dying on set of the film? Oh, yes. Yeah, so Quentin Tarantino I don't know how is dead. Shot the film without him. Yeah, honestly. That was wild. That was wild. Because all films are shot in chronological order, so everything after that scene he was just dead for. Right. Right. <sighs> Dang. So, context for those who haven't seen the film. At the tail end of the film, Quentin Tarantino pulls up for a surprise cameo, and he's he's hauling some dynamite in a bag, and he gets shot and just explodes and dies. Just I don't get TOS for this, but I can get the GIF. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, funny, guys. Where did you put it? Oh, uh, it's. Uh, I thought it was in the memes. It's not. It's it's in the the meme channel. <laughs> No, not copy link. I want open link. All right, I'll give me two seconds to add it into the the frame here. Well, I'll so have. Try, it. Have you seen many Tarantino movies? Like, are you are you I'm, well versed? I'm pretty well versed in in Tarantino, but okay. not because I've only not the I've only seen. Version. Well, now Django Unchained, but also the uh, Kill Bill one and two. Those are the right. only Tarantino movies I've seen. Yeah, I think that. It's so okay. So for the cases of well, I get TOS glorious for this. bastards, wait, what? Do you guys think we'll get TOS for this? No, I don't think so. He said uh, Quiddle just says death. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty obscure. We're okay. Yeah. All right. So now that this is. <laughs> What an artful masterpiece we've made on the screen right now. Poor, poor Tarantino. So anyway, what I was saying is, um, for for three of his recent ones, um, not including the Hateful Eight, which I'm not sure I I, I have no reference about it or of it really as much, mm -hmm. but for Inglorious Bastards, for Django Unchained, and for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he's dug into things that have happened Wait, when, in history. When did Inglorious Bastards come out? Oh, uh, maybe not as recent as I thought. I just know that I've, you know what? Not recently. However, recent uh, for him. Oh yeah, it's guess, 2009. His own recent release, I guess. Not in the 90s, I guess. I don't know how to justify okay. my uh, saying it. But anyway, <laughs> uh -huh. um, those movies have been historical things taken from history and then done in an a di in a different way. Right. So, whereas in, in Django, you know, uh, a slave was able to escape and take the law into his own hands. Obviously, you know, maybe there might be some things in history, but that uh, might, um, what, have inspired it, but, you know, nothing one-to-one -one like that, right? It's right. kind of a, a, a hero story for, for that, which, you know, I think that is fantastic because you don't really get that at all anyway um for inglorious bastards uh a group the titular inglorious bastards uh a group of jewish soldiers going to kill nazis uh oh. yeah yeah and and uh hitler dying in a theater spoiler alert oh. uh, as opposed to his other way of going out you know, just Wait, his adventure. You know, bam, uh, 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 what we would call suicide. You know, he's still alive, right? Okay, we're gonna table that. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, script. the the Manson murders. Mm -hmm. Is that the? That's that's what yeah. that was all about, and how yeah. the whole thing would have changed with this weird action star washed up action star played by leonardo dicaprio it's uh -huh. i don't know it's just such a 
a weird. It's like a poetic take up, take on history. Powerful take on things, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. what if things were in these weird set of circumstances that I've thought up, and what if I told it to everyone that will listen to me? And then he makes the movie, and it's good. I don't know what I'm saying right now, guys. You're gonna have to help me out here. <laughs> He makes a movie and it's Gunther Dunn, isn't it, right? <laughs> Don't go back to that. <laughs> well, you we just want to keep working down the topics page, then. Yeah, we can keep going. Uh, so next, yeah. next on our list of uh, fantastic ideas that we've come up with is cod prices. <laughs> so Jesus. we're talking about the Sorry, fish I'm here. The list. Um, um, no. <laughs> so. I don't know if you guys have tried to buy an old Call of Duty game recently like we have, but, um... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the rest of you have lives, unlike us. Yeah, so, Troy and I were discussing the, um... Well, a little bit of both. We'll, we'll talk about the fish in a moment. Um... So... <laughs> the comparative prices, right? So if you try and buy a COD nowadays, let's... Are we talking about the fish or the uh, franchise? One I'm not talking about the fish or Alright, okay, so on average you can get a Phillips, a Phillips Industry uh, a codfish wall sculpture for about $700, right? That's like okay. 10 COD games. You realize how dumb that is, right? They're still charging $60 for games that came out... Uh, freaking Black Ops 1 is still $60 on Steam. How is Activision squeezing that out? Dude, how they Wild Card the Bot in Greensbury is only $12.49. Ooh, okay, that's that's, that's you can good. you can buy a living fish for less than you can buy an active call a, a five year old Call of Duty game. Oh no, this is dead fish, bro. That'll work. This is like to eat. Still, that's a meal. It's a meal. Yeah, I uh, on that tangent, I think that I don't know the uh, um, capitalism probably was good at the beginning. Maybe you want to look into something new now. I However, say religious oligarchy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Following what religion? So Most I don't critical? You... Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm fine with that. Okay, wait. Side subject. Have you guys you guys have heard of uh like Xenu, right? Five dead versus a five year old game. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Xenu. Xenu, like the, the god of Scientology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he, like, he looks like a really He-Man character. Yeah, he, yeah. The and... religion was created. Okay, the religion was created by a science fiction writer. That should, that should. Basically, that should take... And he, he even made a comment like the best way to make money is to start a religion, and they still follow him as if like he had no ulterior motives. He sounds yeah. perfectly fine to me. I don't know what you're, I don't yeah, know what you're talking it's, about. It's a wild like their whole thing is that like he came to Earth and was like souls now let's give the souls to another planet and then he exploded a volcano and then the souls came to life and now people exist interesting interesting yeah it now is... it's actually a he-man character he looks like a he-man character hold up yeah he looks like he-man just bald he looks like brahmin he-man <laughs> okay yeah dude it's like i just scientology as a religion is so weird because it's like Save this image. You gotta like, 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 pay a fuck ton of money to like they... ascend yourself through the ranks. So that you okay, can, now like, I don't know this, but do they body? claim themselves to actually be a religion? Yes, or is it, is yes. that, okay. okay, no, 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 no. no. Right, so it's on stream if you guys want to see. We're just gonna add reference images as we keep talking right. until the screen is full. But, um, look, I haven't put a lot of research into Scientology, but from like, if, if I'm remembering correctly, it's like they have a ranking system that you can like climb. Yeah, so someone like, did a presentation on this. My it's all about paying money. It's like you pay huh. more money, you climb the ranks better, whatever. Oh. But it's like the whole goal. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like a scam at all. So the whole goal is to like reach a certain rank where you can like detach your like soul whatever from your body and become like a cosmic celestial being or something yeah it's basically okay. you become like xenu it's it's wild like, like you become you... xenu yourself or like no, you're absorbed like him, into a like loving... him. okay okay you become like a celestial being like count yeah okay so in scientology operating thetan otherwise known as ot is a spiritual state above clear um yeah which uh, clear yeah. Oh, is one okay. of the major states practitioners strive to reach on their way to the bridge of total freedom yeah. 
But, like, one of, the, one of the things that they go through on the way up there is, like, pseudo-lie detecting. But they call it, like, it's basically, like, cleansing of, like, your... Basically, it's your Hail Marys from, like, Catholicism, right? Okay. Where, like, you talk behind the wall or whatever. Right. Um, except, confessions. Except they attach, like, this machine to you that's essentially a lie detector. And they said they can, like, feel you or the other you's. You know what I mean? Like, from different dimensions. It's wild. Oh. So... So I'm looking at the the OT ranks, um, which um, achieving operating thetan OT, which is the like the t the highest rank being, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's defined as knowing and willing cause over life, thought, matter, energy, space, and time. So you just huh. kind of can you, you become like omnipotent kind of. So looking at the levels though, they straight up read like they're like like levels of some MMORPG. Yeah, like, they're crazy. Can so I be like, completely real with you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The JoJo's plot that Kellen was explaining yesterday sounds pretty in line with all of it. It sounds, <laughs> like, pretty similar. And I'm not sure if I'm... I'm pretty scared, honestly, yeah. at that at that I'm fact. Just, I'm just gonna read you the names of some of these. Cause so, so, starting at, like, Operating Thetan level 1 is just level 1, and level 2 is just level 2. But then you get to level 3, the Wall of Fire. And then you get uh, Operating Thetan 4, um, Operating Thetan Drug Rundown. <laughs> <laughs> These sound like book titles. Operating Thetan 5, New Era Dianetics for Operating Thetans. What? Well, oh. Dianetics is the name of their, their, their Bible. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's New Era Dianetics for Operating Thetans, and that's unlocked at level 5, I guess? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, at level 6 is Hubbard Solo New Era Dianetics for Operating Thetans Solo NOTs uh, Auditing Course. Wait, so let's theorize so, real quick. What level do you guys think Tom auditing? Cruise is at? Yes, I yeah. said it's an auditing. Okay, okay. Audit auditing is the um is the, the process I was talking about before, where they attach you to the machine. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. Training, I thought. <laughs> training OTs before starting to solo audit our new um, OT uh, six seven is so powerful they actually constitute an entire OT level. On solo NOTs, um, one is dealing with complexities intended to crush one's true power and ability as a thetan. Solo NOTs auditors require a wide range of. Uh, auditing skills to handle the vast phenomenon that can occur on um, operating theme eight, approximately three to four weeks with the new solo auditor course done. So these huh. are like like you earn. So as you're going through, so like one of them is like a drug rundown. They like uh, just make sure you're not on drugs, I guess, or you are on drugs. I can't tell. Maybe um, just the ones um, that they want you on. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Second wall of fire consists of 26 separate rundowns and has been described as dealing with living lightning. What? Oh, uh, the very right. the stuff of life itself. The level addresses the last aspect of one case that can prevent him from achieving total freedom of all dynamics. An audit level uh, administered by advanced organizations, or FLAG, huh? approximately 50 hours. Okay. So there are like, different levels that you go through to like climb the ranks. Um... And then the last level is level 8, and it's called Truth Revealed. Um, auditing the level 8, the highest level in Scientology, is offered only abroad the Free Winds, which is a former cruise ship. Do they that... offer college credits for this? I don't know, but apparently they have a cruise ship, and you can only reach OT level 8 on the cruise ship, the Free Winds. Uh, this level audit level the cruise, was the so. primary cause for amnesia on the whole... What? Okay, this whole audit level addresses the primary cause of amnesia on the whole track and lets one see the truth of his own existence. Uh, this is the first actual OT level and brings about a resurgence of power and native abilities for the being himself. This may be done at the flagship service organization. What? Wow. That's a lot to take in. Um, yeah, so we've branched off, but I, I've enjoyed this talk about Scientology. What the, so you can go like beyond level eight to um, to obtain the state of operating thetan that is called cleared thetan cl uh, cleared theta clear. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm a part of clear theta clear. Um, <laughs> it's the local Scientology <laughs> frat on campus. Which is basically you become even more of a thetan than you already were, I guess. Right. Oh, so, um, you gain the mechanical means to have and feel no need of bodies, um, uh, and you can just use the universe to keep 
yourself and friends of interest in existence beyond your bodies. Okay, so, like, my question is, how when people get to this state, how do they, like, I mean, obviously, you've paid this much, and you're like, I guess, how do you feel this, man? Like, this is things that aren't accessible to human beings. I think at some point, it's just self out. I think it's self confirmation. Like, at this point, you've spent so much money that if you don't believe it, you, it's you, just that much placebo. Exactly. You'd be in a position where you would hate yourself, so you force yourself to believe this stuff, so you start feeling it. Placebo is one hell of a yeah, one hell of a one drug. hell of a one hell of a drug. Yeah. Insane. So why do celebs can't not like kids? Well, I think that relates pretty pretty well with um <laughs> with Scientology. Yeah. Um. So I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Well, what's the context for this topic? It's exactly what it sounds like. Why can't celebs stay away from little kids? Why? Yeah. Um, oh, that's what you mean. I just oh. don't. What? Oh, hey, what? Rain is here. What's up, Rain? Like, it's just like people you'd never expect. It's like always celebrities. Maybe it's just because like it's going on so much, but only celebrities get outed because those are like the big, the ones who are like out in the open. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's also that they have the, like, obviously they have the the means to get it, you know, stature, um, money. Yeah. But what Raina. compels them to like? Raina, if you pay me twenty bucks, I can advance you to operating feet level through the wall of fire. I cannot understand you, and at all. <laughs> More so, I'm scared. <laughs> I said if you paid me 20 bucks, I can advance you to operating the level 3 the wall of fire. Oh, only 30 bucks? For now. I don't, I don't think you're an ordained, um, whatever this look, look, Troy, pseudo religion is called. I just, it's not a pseudo religion, okay. I'm just, the, the highest level that you can get to allows you to keep yourself, like, outside of your own body. Oh, right? well I can do that you all the time. Right? I'm just saying, you've never seen me, so you don't know. You don't know. You okay, don't know. that's fair. That's completely fair. Ben, if you would like to bypass the firewall and get to level 4, you have to uh, go through Windows for that. You have to make sure you run as the administrator. I understand you're having problems. Just right-click, run as administrator, you'll be fine. You can get to the firewall. Wild concept. I'm not sure how to uh, approach any of this. Like, my brain is empty, but it's even more empty than it usually is. Oh, Raina, you... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Anyway, so why can't celebs stop diddling kids? <laughs> what are your what are your working theories on it? My working theory... I think as you, as you become an actor... I mean, we talked about this. I think there's something you have to go through. I think um, before you enter the Actors Guild, they ask you if you have an interest in kids, and if you say no, no they no, turn you away. No, seriously, seriously, no, actually, <laughs> real talk, what do you think is, uh... What did Michael Jackson do? Was a if I had to give my best honest guess, it's probably, like... It's power. Like, it's, yeah, it goes, the power goes to your head. Right, you but, well, how come you can't be disgusting with... Well, first of all, don't be disgusting with anyone, but how come you can't just be disgusting with adults? I think the whole idea is that they want someone submissive, and since children have no choice, they're, they're, they're always in a position of submissivity. Is that a word? Submissiveness. And so it makes them it, easy targets for stuff like that. God, it might also disgusting. be like, a situation where it's like, for a person that caliber or whatever, like... Getting an adult to do something like that is like really not that difficult. And so they're just like, eh, and then they get bored. And then they're like, hmm, time for something new. And it's like, uh oh. That's horrible. Yeah. Truly really horrible targets today on the podcast. Alright, so pubes are God. <laughs> That's not or. Okay. <laughs> Let's, let me clarify, okay? As, as much as I can clarify. I asked this question. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I'm not sure how many branches of Christianity they believe, but uh, uh, I, at least the one that I subscribe to, the, the current one that I subscribe to, that sin... Wait, do you pay monthly uh, for yours? Because I think I have a after, free trial. <laughs> after sin came into the world, that's when all the bad things came, came about, right? So then that prompted the question from me, did pubes 
come on our body, you know, like, Patrick's stuck? Awaits. Are they stuck on the body, or did we get them through Sin? Like, did Sin pimp our bodies with pubes? I... Hey. Alright, so uh, here's my theory, right? I think it's like spiders. So I don't, I don't spiders. Like that. I think spiders were created by God, right? But right. when sin happened, they were used for a different purposes. Now they're used to get rid of mosquitoes, right? Right. So I think we had them, but now it's like they're used for you know something else. Being they have annoying. Um, okay. You know what I mean? Like, the whole idea is that now they have a different... It's, it's like a... It, it's repurposing because of Sin, but I think they were there. Because we had hair on our head, otherwise what's the point of hair on our head? To express ourselves. Um, no, I have no explanation yeah, but for if, hair in my head. But if we were naked, we could express ourselves down there too. What? If hair is for self-expression, then the hair down Which there... Which I never seriously matter, argued. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, this isn't an argument, I mean, like, I think, what, wh what is an analogy? Oh, what an analogy. Um, alright, I think they were there, and made to be what they are. That's my theory. What are they? <sighs> I don't know, hair on my crotch. <laughs> great. Alright. That was a great topic. That was a good one. We need to get, first of all, better topics. Second of all, better segues. Anyway. We ask the real questions, even if they don't have real answers. <laughs> Can that be the tagline of our podcast? I feel like there are multiple taglines that could come to this podcast, such as, we don't know what we're doing. Um, is that mainly uh, Is, two is months... enslaving wild animals to do your bidding manly? I don't, I don't really find that manly. I think dog fighting is not really seen as manly. <laughs> I think it's just kind of seen as generally shitty. <laughs> You're not a real man, Christian. I guess not. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't fight dogs in the street like a real man. This is why your father's disappointed in you. Honestly, could be. Could be one of the many reasons. <laughs> it's a joke. Back then, people were fucked, bro. I agree. I think people are still fucked. People are always fucked. You know, I, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna steal a segment from another podcast. Right, that's me. much better than ours. Alright. Hit me. Uh, so, this is... So do I have to be a non-convincingly gay actor now? Like, no, uh, no, 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 no. They're, they're pretty straight. Um, but if you are gay, then please, by all means. Like I'm a... on a. I'm on a website. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of it before. It's um. Uh, re. Redite, I think. Oh. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Oh no! I know what you're talking about. It's actually pronounced, Redit. Oh, Redit. Is that French? Yes. The T is silent. So it's ready gonna... in French, but you know we, we right. pronounce the T because we're uh, backwoods Americans. Hmm. Talk about your time in quarantine. Um. <laughs> so I went on a trip recently, actually. Oh yeah, talk about your rafting trip. Yeah, so I I, I just spent a week on the the main fork of the Seine. Uh, there was some water. Moved real fast. Wow, I really went to that gas station and got some gum. What? Insane story. Insane oh. story. <laughs> no, it was pretty cool though, because the flamboyancy. Oh yeah, yeah tell I us mean, about the name of your boat. Okay, so, so, you hit me, hit me, hit me. So, so the original plan for the rafting trip, so my family, we own a boat, and then my cousin's family, who we went with, they also own a boat. So we had too many people for two boats, we were like, hey, we're going to rent a third boat. And then my cousin and I, because usually our dads run the boats, so my cousin and I were like, hey, yo, we're going to run this one boat. We'll trade it off back and forth, whatever, whatever. And it's like, hell yeah, that's a great idea. So when we were setting up the boat, when we like rented it, and it was the night before the trip, I was like, hmm, we should name the boat, because it's like, always a good idea to name the ship. It's like, oh, cute. And I was trying to think of a good, good name for the boat. Um, and I was like, hmm. And I was thinking, because I got these, uh, these like, f like bright flaming pink, um, 
like swim shorts, basically. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to see them sometime. Oh yeah, 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 of course. And I was like, damn, these these are kind of flamboyant. That's the word I used to describe them. And I was like, hey, wait a minute, buoyant, like it floats. And so I was like, ah ha ha, the boat is flamboyant, so I call it buoyancy. But then I never actually ended up uh, rowing it because there was a kayak there, and I was like, oh shit, and I rode that the entire time because I thought it would be more fun. And I also flipped and swam um, a lot of rapids on the river, including the biggest rapid on the river called Black Creek, and it was terrifying. Nice. Nice. So he has one semen. Look, look at the semen. Yeah, look at what the semen, semen go. So, but Rena, it wasn't like a legit kayak. It was a, an inflatable kayak, so it was like really like um, easy to flip. Yeah, it was still fun though. We found a bunch of animals, like there were a bunch of frogs and uh, fucking just a lot of frogs. Like at night, you go out to the beach and there'd just be fifty frogs just there. We found a we found a blue tail skink. Oh, that's cool. I like skinks. Yeah, yeah it, the tail is super blue, which is kind of trippy because like you always see stuff like that in like um like um like documentaries. Yeah, in like um, National Geographic magazines and shit like that. And it's like right. oh shit, that's like a really cool color, but it doesn't look like that in real life, right? Like there's no way. But then you see them, and it's like oh damn. Nature is really beautiful. It is. I agree. I'm a, I put a picture of the skink. I'm I'm uh, I'm, put, I'm putting one in, in on the stream. There's also a, there's also a salamander. Salamander is pretty cool. But the but the picture I took. Oh yeah, I can get one. Hold on, I just delete this one real quick. Oh no, yeah. I almost deleted Leo. Oh, don't do that. Let me go to the. Oh, the skink. Yeah. There were a bunch of frogs, a bunch of skinks. It's a good time. We like amphibians. Can I get a, Dob a, can I get an oh dang chat, please? Oh nice, oh dang. Now I have a question for you guys. This is an AMA after all. Yeah, hit mm -hmm. me. What did you want to do? Uh, I'm gonna segue into something after this, so just keep that in mind. But what did you want to do when you were little? What was your uh, your dream job? All right. Um. Kellen, you want to go or? I've been, I've been talking for a minute, so you can you can someone else talk. All right. Um. So when I was a kid, I think the first thing I really wanted to be was um what we called a Lego designer. Basically, oh. I wanted to yeah. I wanted to make Lego sets and like design them. And there was this program you could get for your computer. I don't know if you guys had it. I don't remember what it was called. It's like Master Builder. No, or I definitely like that. had it. I definitely had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and you could like make your own sets, but they were like four times the cost to get if you oh, order them. Heavy. And so you could like, oh, hey, what's up? Um, yeah, so we could like... Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Though. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I wanted to be. And so like, we had this yearbook one year, and I think Troy's seen this before, it was like my middle school yearbook. On the back, I was an option to circle. And when I saw it, it was like I had found my calling. <laughs> you know? I was like, like, like the stars had the line. Yeah, yeah, I saw Lego designer, and I was like, this is my moment. I ninjas on here too and so i circled ninja and lego designer and i figured i could mix those two <laughs> together um clearly didn't Where work the career out counselors for both of those because i want i need to have a word with them because apparently uh, panera dishwasher wasn't on there um <laughs> pretty uh, pretty shit yearbook in my opinion uh <laughs> <laughs> so I, the second thing i wanted to be after that was comic book writer or drawer oh okay. artist okay. comic book artist i wanted to make comic books um i soon realized i suck at drawing <laughs> um so that wasn't gonna work out i'm pretty sure we've all had that moment yeah yeah it was um it was a rough time like realizing how bad i was especially when a uh, my friend who was a fantastic artist since he was a kid would like draw these little comics next to me and i was like i want to do that I want to be so good at this. And then I would try drawing them, and it would... How do I describe this? Like, if a five-year-old was given a pencil, but he held it with all of his hands, like it was a crayon. All of his hands. All of his, <laughs> his, all of his fingers, sorry, all of his fingers. Like, it was a crayon. <laughs> and, like, he, he tried to draw with his left hand, but not his right hand. That's what my comics looked like when I drew with my right hand as hard as I could. Oh, wow. It was really bad. And, and Troy, you, I mean, you saw my art from drawing one. 
uh, this past that, okay, year. Okay, that was that was not bad, Christian. You, that was you can't shit. See, beauty is the eye of the beholder. Gosh. All right. Well, you're so, colorblind, so shut up. You hold, you hold yourself <laughs> to a different standard than I hold you. All right. You're always going to be a, a worse critic than I will ever be. You think it'd be that low? Well? Wait. Well, what do you mean? You hold yourself to a higher standard than I hold you. Yeah. <laughs> like for art, I don't give a. You know, you care more about your art than I will. You know. Uh. True, true. You know? It's like, it's true, your true. grade, not my grade. Yeah, true, true. Um, yeah, and then after that, I wanted to be a video game designer, which Troy knows about. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's when we met. That's when we met, freshman year of high school, wanted to be a video game designer. And He uh, did, he he tried making his own uh, his own games with coding and everything like that. It was I actually did. pretty cool. I did, and I enjoy it, um, but also I hate it. Oh. Um, it's the math portion that I really don't like. Um, I enjoy the oh. I enjoy the problem solving aspect of like, oh, this didn't work, so let's go back to the code, figure out what's wrong, and like solve the puzzle, and then it works, and it's so satisfying. But in that time of absolute frustration and pain, where you your spaghetti coded, sixteen uh, bit game that you made on your tiny laptop, uh, your one hundred dollar laptop you bought, um, it was frustrating as hell. Um, and I realized. Uh, also, Adventist colleges uh, don't do game design, so <laughs> uh, it was going to cost yeah. too much to do that. So I was like, hmm, what do I actually like? And that's like, well, getting deep for a moment. The advice I always give to people whenever they ask me, like, what do you want to, what do you want to, what do you think I should do when I grow up? You know, like, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, break it down to something you love to do because you're not going to end up doing something you love forever. That's just not how it works. You're, eventually it's going to be a, like a job. But if you love the heart of the thing, you can always find something you like to do. And so I've always loved to tell a good story, which is why I wanted to do video game development, and which is now why I'm doing film. Because I love to tell a good story. Nice. Now, when did, you, when did you come up with that? Um, film? Yeah, when was film, like, um, solidified? So when my dreams were crushed by the fact that... Uh, let's not get into that. When my dreams were crushed junior year of high school... Um, right. I didn't know what to do, and I was like, uh, I want to pursue something like this, and then I was like, well, I kind of want to go to Southern, which is a school in Tennessee, for those of you who don't know, it's an Adventist school, and I was like, their film program's really good, and then I started looking into it, and I didn't realize how much I'd always been influenced by, like, the movies and the TV shows that I'd, that I'd watched since I was a kid, and when it, when it hits you, like, when you realize how much something has affected you, it's crazy, you know? Moments like the first time I watched a PG-13 movie, which was Transformers, by the way, and my parents skipped all the violent <laughs> scenes, and it was like, the, the scene of Scorponok ripping up people in the desert, skipped. Uh, scene of Jazz getting ripped in half, skipped. Scene of Frenzy killing FBI dudes, skipped. I, I saw like 20 minutes of movie. <laughs> but like, that impacted me. That movie will always stick with me, and I was like, I want to make something that's going to stick with someone. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that was, that was like my goal. You know, and I think that's when it hit me when I realized how like these things affected me, and realized that I didn't have to be doing game development to find something that I love to do because I just love to tell a story. You know, I mean, even right now, it's what I'm doing. Like I'm sitting down, is just talking and telling a story. I've always loved doing this, like talking with people and just not reminiscing, but just like telling tales. You know, it's always been what I've loved Hell to do. Hell yeah, dude! It's I want to say that I take uh, a little bit of credit for uh, for this this man's culture i want to i want to take oh, a little you bit definitely of do. That. yeah there are movies that i would never have seen if troy hadn't suggested them to me yeah. i'm so not sure yeah. um i don't this know this is where you put like a porn title the what <laughs> <laughs> i have i have not introduced him to any of his deviant <laughs> plans that's uh that's all him baby <laughs> so here's the thing like when i if i ever become famous um you know how like when books come out it's like oh this book written by so and so it's gonna be Christian uh, created by Troy <laughs> underneath it <laughs> well the the way that we started I guess bonding was after I said that the the main theme for Skyrim makes me hard in my room oh no the words you said was this makes me ejaculate let's be oh. very clear that's that's the words that I said those words have stuck with me forever and um <laughs> We were we worked uh, we were essentially sweatshop workers, right? Making making screws, and Office that doesn't make screws, sense maybe. to 
any of you, but popping gonna, screws. I'm gonna look up insulation screws and put it on the stream. Oh, uh, popping screws. That was that was our our hell. That was our crucible where our friendship was forged, right? And our supervisor would get mad at us because we'd be singing songs from Les Mis, the only musical, or not only, but one, like the, of the, it's one of the uh, only ones I'd seen at the time. Only one of the only musicals I had seen at the time. And that's like how we how we bonded over over that kind of that that storytelling. Um, he got me into anime, yeah, which was weird. I had to swallow my pride for that one. So for those watching the stream, those little white caps, we had to push those on by hand every day. Every day for two and a half hours. Do. Yeah. It was pretty. Yeah, I remember fun. on the topic of anime, freshman year, Troy said, "I'm I'm never gonna watch anime. It's just not my thing. I don't really wanna." The, the anime, <laughs> the anime I got him to watch, was Sword Art Online. Uh, <laughs> was that the first one? I'm not sure if yeah. that was the first one. That was the first one I got you to watch. Okay. You may have watched them on your own before, but the first one I suggested to you because I'm like, this is the most beginner bad anime ever. Watch Sword Art Online. And it was all downhill from there. It was all downhill from there. Yeah. It feels like the the anime that like all the 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 whole I've never been watching anime people like got into first was Attack on Titan. It's yes. Like yes. I, yeah. I I feel like uh, so even at my job. Um, like at Panera, the first thing that like I heard from these people is like, "Oh yeah, I can't wait for Attack on Titan season three. And I was like, "Attack on Titan season two is trash. These people are really still watching. <laughs> wait, season two is trash. What was season two? I don't remember season. Two. I didn't like if season. You can't okay, remember what? a season of an anime. That is easily the best sign that it wasn't good. Season three was good though, wasn't it? I heard season three got better. That's what they the were telling me. Then the fucking. Yeah, so they told me that it got better from there, but I haven't seen it. The religious cult and everything? Yeah, the Titan cult. Yeah, it was... This... I, I agree, though. I think it's very. It's one of those, like, baseline anime that's very, um... It's sick. It's not like it's bad. It's just generic. You know what I mean? Attack on Titan? Uh-huh. It's generic? And its themes and its characters, yeah. Oh, conceptually, I would say it's very not, though. No. No, I think conceptually it's a very original idea. I think, again, themes and characters is what I'm more referring to. Like, there are yeah. tropes in the show where you're like, okay, so I know what's going to happen in that character because their character arc, I've seen it a million times in a million different anime. Right. You know? But it's again, it's not bad. It's like that idea of... Uh, I, I always feel like I come off pretentious whenever I say things are bad. I think... Okay, so my, my take on it as someone who was uh, who was in that position was those concepts, like the way, the things that they kind of play with this this kind of gung ho action that Shonen is. Mm -hmm. It's very it's easy to watch and it's familiar because of all any action movie or action show that you've watched before. I mean, like it's just that, but in a different language and animated. It's just a different medium, and I think people were just like. Um, were kind of scared not scared but like they were wary of watching it because there's a stigma so really people is. who watch these things you know yeah there really uh, yeah, is I... like a stigma behind it i think that's the biggest problem you know if you're an yeah, anime no watcher it means you're a weed like you're like you're all out and it, it what's crazy is there's so many like closeted anime watchers that i've met who are like jocks and then i'm hearing naruto references out of their mouth and i'm like you just quote a Kakashi it's, line at me? Like it's looking more into popular culture. Like it's becoming yeah. more and more okay to like like Oh definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Could probably minimize Zeno a bit here. <laughs> How are you gonna Yo. discreet Zeno like that, bro? Come on. Mm, oh, uh Kellen. So back yes. to the favorite or um preferred job. Oh yeah, our dream job. When even what was uh what was yours? All right, so, so, your boy has uh has uh big fears of disappointing people, right? So right. my dad was like, "Hey yo, kiddo, you gotta get into coding if you wanna have a good life." And I'm like, "Oh, oh uh oh, okay." So then I've always just been like, "Yes, I wanna be a computer programmer for like ever." until like 
uh, eighth grade when I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a computer programmer. Um, that's my story. So then I was like, hey, I like wiggly air. I like touching it and making it wiggle nice. So then I got into that. He's talking yeah. about sound. He's talking about sound. It's <laughs> like, whoa. Really had me go in there for a moment. For those of you who don't know, um, Kellen is an alchemist and he <laughs> controls the airwaves. Yeah. Actually, would you like to describe what you what you do? Kellen? Wait, are you talking to me or Troy? Yeah, Kellen. Oh, I thought you were talking to Troy. Um, wait, what do you mean, like, describe? What a music mean? engineer is what he calls it. At least. Okay. That's what he told me. Okay, okay. Yeah, which so, I think I think makes so, it sound super badass. I'm gonna be real. Okay. So how do, how do, how do you explain it? It's like if I'm, you get I think it, wiggly air was pretty. Yeah. So like, sound how it, like it wiggles right, but it's like, that's not it. Because there's like a lot of it, and all of it if it's wiggling, yes and no, Arena. So all of it. If it's some like like music production is like something more of a hobby, whereas music engineering is like something I can actually turn into a career easier. Um, so I, I'd love to go professional as a music producer at some point, but to get there, mm, Sabi says uh, professional airway blur. Yeah. Well, not. I mean, yes. It's like it's like so. Sound sounds bad most of the time, but you can make it sound good. Mm -hmm. Um. But. <laughs> by knowing how it like works yeah he is so and he's so, not really explaining it very well right now but he has gone on for like hours on end to me about this kind of stuff that's that's what i'm trying because it's like it's hard to explain without going on for hours and hours and hours right um sound sounds bad you can make it sound good that's the goal is to just make so like if you have like a song or something and you have everything that goes into that song and you want it to all like sound good right like play on anywhere so you, so you gotta think okay so like where's this like this song gonna be played on is it gonna be played on stereo speakers is it gonna be played on mono speakers is it gonna be played um on like radios is it gonna be played like as a spotify app music things like that it's like all these things where it's like what is what is this gonna do and then you have to engineer the song to be uh to go into that so you record everything in and then you mix it all together so that it fits nice together and then you master it all for each individual book yeah Oh, like music engineer. I don't wanna... yeah. Well, it's the science of sound. Like it's just, yeah, and it's amazing. I love, I love hearing like one of the things I've always loved just hearing people like talk about things they're passionate about. It's cool hearing you talk about it. Uh, I think this is a There's slight soft thing. Really yeah, because it's like just record something stupid, but like you do that and it doesn't like how 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 do you, like Take the next you level. listen to why why did they sound good and whereas like if you just like record yourself singing on your phone it sounds like shit like what's going on and then so like that's just like that whole side of it of music that's like very careerable because you can you can become an audio engineer and work on movies tv shows games uh music and you know anything that has sound you can work there so i want to go into that because it's because i'm mostly into like music production as a hobby i just like music in general um but music engineering is something that to me feels like i could turn that into a career easier than i can going into the music industry as like an artist or anything like that so but my goal is to get there at some point and you know do music production for whatever it may be yeah, yeah. that's really awesome so before we before we get into troy's there's something, um, this is a slight side subject. There's something that I've always, like I, like I said, I've always liked hearing people talk about things that they're passionate about. And one of the things that is super interesting is people who are um, slightly on the spectrum, right? There's something like, there's always something that like they focus on. So I have a friend, um, they have like one topic that they know everything about. And when they start talking about it, it is so freaking amazing to watch like how they know every single intricate detail and to like hear them talk about it like it's nothing because I can't memorize stuff for shit. <laughs> so like hearing like people talk about passion and stuff like that is so cool to me. I think it's interesting how like specifically people who are on the spectrum like their brains work slightly differently. So Kellen, what I'm getting to is you're on the spectrum. 
Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's just, it's amazing to hear. Sorry, so, small side subject. So, Troy. Where oh, did you want to be? Okay. okay, so there were, there were multiple <laughs> multiple things that I wanted to do with my life when I was when I was younger. Um, we're old uh... <laughs> When he was younger? Well, that's the current, it's the current docket. That's that's what's uh, on first on the list right now. But when I was younger, right? Um, well, first of all, did you guys hear my cat? I tried to put my, my mic up to his mouth when he his mouth his mouth when he meowing. He doesn't seem to be meowing. It. He's asking for food. Anyway, um, on that subject, I really like animals, and I still really like animals, and I wanted to be a veterinarian. There was a problem with that though. Okay, I'm allergic. Is Ryan Troy? Oh. I'm quite allergic to, to animals, so that gutted me. And that's never been something that I haven't considered still, but I was like, it's probably not going to be the best idea if, I, um, if I'm if i allergic, you know? So I'm like, okay, what are other things that I can do? And, and then, then I Troy never thought to about it. to color yet. science before learning he's colorblind. <laughs> I did I never really had thoughts for there were there were like of course dream jobs um and I'm gonna get to the one uh that that I landed on or that I really wanted to do for like the longest time right mm -hmm. but um yeah for like the past couple of years for the majority of high school I had no idea what I wanted to do at all um I've never been really bad in school at all you know I think that I've I've kept a decent rep Repertoire? Repertoire. R rapport? Rapport with, with, with staff and students alike. Um, and I, <laughs> in high school, I'd skip out weeks, uh, sick days at a time just because I was bored. Now, nah, but you were I'd... sick. <laughs> yeah, no, Christian knows. I left him for like a good month. Because <laughs> I was in California. <laughs> just wear a mask. And, and I that my grades weren't hurt in the slightest so yeah. i oh. it's i never knew what i wanted to do through all that though there was never any passion behind anything besides and this is where um the tangent is going to find its way back to something that we planned earlier i wanted to be an actor right yep, i remember so, this so for those who don't uh, those of you who don't know my parents um they they were born in the philippines originally from the philippines my dad came here when he was 12 uh with the family he has like one sister but like five brothers or something crazy like that he has a big family and uh his dad was never never at home and his mom was you know taking care of everyone but he found his way back after he joined the army he left the army and he found his way back to the philippines and started a career with acting uh modeling and, and bodybuilding and all that stuff and uh he met my he met my mom uh first at a club that they saw each other at multiple times and they danced and then on a talk show with a mutual friend of theirs and that's how they met met hmm. uh, she was a news anchor in the philippines she was the head anchor and he was a uh, the up-and-coming star a famous family <laughs> <laughs> so i would always have tales of that in the back of my head you know i was like man this is so cool and they uh, they raised me with like with a lot of movies and a lot of theater you know like we'd, we'd go to the ballet at our local theater all the time we'd, we'd watch like swan lake um fiddler on the roof i remember when you found a swan lake record at a, the garage sale at our school and you like freaked out and you bought it you didn't have a record yeah player. yeah it's just you know we've, i've always had that 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 side you know that my parents have instilled it in me that that the arts are really important and so i always wanted to do something with that but like how is someone supposed to do anything with that you know, it's it's such a weird business to get into. However, even though I didn't get anywhere with it so far, my father has. And I'm not sure how Christian's going to do it, but I have a commercial that my dad oh, started yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that or it? that he was in. Let me get the link. I downloaded it. So app. actually talking about that, Trey, it kind of gives me a thought. It's like you're saying like it's a, it's hard to get into yada yada. How do you turn into a job? So for, for anyone else, when someone's talking about like, and like, is this like the same thing for anyone else? With like, if someone's like, yo, I want to go into film and do whatever, whatever. And you're just like, cool, sounds good. And it's like, you just seem like that's reasonable. Like, just go do that, right? But then when it's like you thinking about going into something that you're passionate about, it's like, that feels too like 
oh, no, enjoyable man. to be a job where it just feels like it's not doable. If that makes sense, right? Does, it, does anyone else like feel that? Yeah, you know, like I have so much fun doing it. There's like, how am I going to find it? A way that it's going to be profitable first of all and right, stable second of all like in my brain it's like it can't be profitable and like enjoyable like those those aren't like legally allowed to be together so yeah just, uh, yeah so if you want i can throw up the uh yeah i, I dropped it in the living room yeah no no i have um, it loaded up and ready yeah i'm watching you ready stream. Right. yeah all right is it up oh shit, is yeah. that him all right it's just black screened. Oh, hold up. I gotta I gotta add something real quick. Hold up, my fault. Should we just YouTube party the thing and then watch it from there? Uh, da, da, da. Hold up. Ah. This is being frustrating. Hold up. What did I just do? Is that... Troy, is that your dad at the end? Yeah, that's my dad at the end. <laughs> all right. Bro. So, alright. Should be up. You can see the YouTube thing. Uh, it's still dark. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Sorry, the stream's probably delayed. Okay, let me make sure. See what we're looking at here. Pulling up the stream on my phone. Make sure. Okay, okay. you ready? Yeah. Okay. Also, no. The, the quality is really bad. The quality of the of the video itself is just horrible. Why do they smile like that? <laughs> That's your dad. <laughs> Wait, can we get? Why don't you why don't you go back and pause it just right there? I'm watching the stream. I'm not sure if you already have. I did. I already have. <laughs> so that's that's Troy's father. That's my dad. That's my father. That's Troy's father. Um, and we just watched art. Oh, I see. He's a Joe Star. <laughs> he is a Joe Star, by the way. For those of you who don't know, his nickname in the Philippines, and as his career oh, right, as a right. merchant marine and in the army, his name was Jojo. It was referred to as Jojo. Wait, was he actually legitimately referred to as Jojo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my older brother is named after him. His name is Joey. Bro. Yeah. yeah let me, uh... There we go. Alright, sorry, I had to swap that so thing It's gonna swap around for a second. That's him. Yeah. He's been a bodybuilder. He's been... Actor. Um, model. You know, he's... He's been around, and as a kid, how could I not want to have something like that? After being told those stories of grandeur, how could I not want to be involved in that? You know? So, true. I think there's one vital piece that's uh, inhibiting your success here. The pink hair. You need the pink hair. I don't have the pink hair? Is that the reason? Pink hair. I'll get it eventually, if it's for my role. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, but... Besides all that, I do, like, the arts are so important. Um, I'm not sure they're as important as they need to be paid as much as they are <laughs> currently in in the world today, while doctors don't get as much because life... But art is super important. It's it's tradition, it's culture being passed down, you know. Troy, um, uh, you should check the stream. What? Oh, oh, no. Oh. There's so much <laughs> stuff in front of Leo DiCap. <laughs> Oh my god. Can we keep this trend? Oh, just putting stuff yeah. as the stream go? Yeah, I love that. It's absolutely fantastic. But, yeah, I mean, even if I don't have a career with it, I think that it's, it's, I'm, I'm having fun with just looking stuff up, practicing me speaking, you know, like with monologues and stuff. Um, something I got into recently is Greek tragedies, and oh. so... That's some can stuff that I want to look up. Can I please just like send me recordings of you like reciting Greek tragedies, please? <laughs> Can I have a book them into, into beats? I need that shit right now. I have a book next to me. Uh, I have one that I like from um, Electra. Troy reads Greek poems on stream. <laughs> Do we want it? I I I, 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 I take a couple. Yeah. 
Okay, hold up. Let me find the other one. The other one uh, is called uh, Death and Cupid. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, uh, man. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it. But poetry is a... <laughs> Sorry, I found one that's called An Honest Whore, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Sounds like someone I know. Me? Me? Is it me? Sure. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to close the door because I cat left, so I'm going to close it and then I'm going to read this. Excerpt. So, some background for, um, for Electra, or I'm not sure if that's how it's actually pronounced in the original Greek, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, but, um, as far as I know, I haven't been able to research it too much or read into it as much as I want to. Um, Electra and Orestes, or Orestes, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, their brother and sister, and their mom, it's a very Hamlet situation where the mom... Um, had their father killed and now is out for them. I guess not Hamlet exactly, but you know, Wait, parents. This isn't. This isn't the. No, no, no. That's yeah. Never mind. No, keep going. So, anyway, at this point, um, I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but Orestes is at a low point. He is distraught completely. All right, and um, so I'll just I'll just get into it. <clears throat> Get me my horn tip bow. The bow Apollo gave me to scare these bitches off if they threatened me with madness. <laughs> Banish demons! Goddesses you may be, but unless you go, this human hand shall draw your blood. Damn it, go! Ignore me, do you? Do you see this bow already drawn? This arrow notched and ready? What? Still here? Banish. Spread your wings. Skim the air, will you? Go hound Apollo, accuse his oracle, but go! What was I saying? And why am I panting so? What am I doing here, out of bed? But, wait, I remember now. A great storm, the waves crashing, but now this calm, this peace. Why are you crying? Why do you hide your face? Oh, my poor sister, how wrong it is that what I have to suffer, this sickness, this madness, should hurt you too and cause you shame. Please, please don't cry. Not on my account. Let me bear the shame. I know you consented to the murder too, but I killed not you. No. I accuse Apollo. The god is the guilty one. It was he who drove me to this dreadful crime. He and his words, egging me, encouraging me, all words, no action. I think now if I had asked my dead father at the time if I should kill her, he would have begged me, gone down on his knees before me, and pleaded, implored me not to take my mother's life. What had we to gain by murdering her? Her death could never bring him back to life, and I, by killing her, would have to suffer as I suffer now. I seem so hopeless, dear, I know. But lift your head. Do not cry. And sometimes when you see me morbid and depressed, comfort me and call me, and I in turn, when you despair, will comfort you with love. Love is all we have. The only way that we can help each other. Now, go inside. Bathe and eat and give those tired eyes their needed sleep. If you should leave me now, if you fall ill yourself from nursing me, then I am dead. You are all my help. You are my hope. Damn. 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 Thanks for coming and watching the bot guys, everybody. <laughs> um. How was it? Is that how we're ending it? I mean, honestly, I think that's kind of a good way to end. What do you guys think? I'll have more poetry next time. That was. Dang. All right. Thank you for coming and watching. Thanks for watching, everyone. Here's that, like, as as Trey was like kind of getting into it, like all, all I could really envision was him like standing outside of uh, Ben's little hobble hole, <laughs> and reading the <laughs> said he could help him out with this. Yeah. Oh, 
Well, um, I also did star uh, as Lucifer, aka Satan, in a musical, so we'll talk about that next time. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a great stream. I'll see if I can get this on my channel. And uh, what was the what was the motto we said earlier? We ask the real questions. We don't give the real yes. answers. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, everybody. All right, thanks.